Hi everybody. This is my first video tutorial, so bear with me if it doesn't go as well as I plan it to. Um, and I wanted to start off with showing everybody something that I learned yesterday that I was doing incorrectly. Um, not necessarily incorrectly, but I wasn't using it to its full potential. And that was using my color checker passport. I got talked into it at a trade show about a year and a half ago. I thought it looked cool, but I also thought it seemed really expensive for a glorified gray card, basically. But like I said, got talked in, into, into it, trade show, had some money to spend, and um, was getting excited about my business. So I bought the color checker, and I forced myself to use it, and I kind of loved it right off the bat. I loaded the program onto my computer, and then I would take the color checker to my sessions and set it up like so on this picture here, or if it was an adult or an older child, I would have them hold it up to their face. And then when I would load my pictures up onto Lightroom, I would zoom in um, before I did any other adjustments on the picture, and I would zoom in, take my eyedropper, and hold it over this first, um, white box here that is showing um, a portrait section. So the little person's head here, as you go across the scale, I believe it gets warmer and warmer. So I would always put it on the first one and you see how change the white balance and it looks a ton better. The original was my um, Canon 5D Mark IV um, being shot in auto white balance and as you can see it's super cool so I would adjust the white balance again click the eyedropper click on this first box here and 95% of the time it was a color that I preferred sometimes I would go up to the second box and if you watch her face you can see it just gets a tad bit warmer if we go up a little bit further, it gets a little bit warmer. Um, we'll go to the last one just for comparison. And you can see she got super orange. And I don't, I don't know, that's just way, way too warm. You look at the wood, it looks almost pink. So I've just learned over time that I really prefer this first box here. And it looks most natural. So I was like, okay, there, I set my custom white balance. I would sync that um, along with some of my other starting adjustments that I would do. I'd uh, boost the contrast a little bit, um, just a teeny bit, boost the clarity a teeny bit. Um, I would try it around eight. I don't know why, but I usually stick it around eight or nine and it's not wanting to stay. Um, I would scroll down. If I was shooting with natural light, I would add a little luminance noise reduction. And then I would always click on this camera profile um, that is set up for your camera and your specific lens. And it just corrects any dis natural distortions that occur. Um, it always amazes me to see that. I'm like, it looks fine to begin with, but then Somehow it looks better even when you click that, enable that profile. Um, and then I would sync that with all the rest of the photos in that, in that session that I had highlighted. And I thought I was done. Well, I found out yesterday in a workshop that I was in that I was not using the passport to its fullest potential. Um, and there was a reason why I had to... Um, download a program when I bought the passport um, and it was actually a Lightroom plugin and I never understood what it was used for if I was just taking a picture and clicking on it. So I'm going to show you guys <clears throat> what I learned and how it changes um, how it changes the image 
a tiny bit more and makes it a tiny bit better than just affecting the white balance like I did just now. So I'm going to click reset and go back to my original image. Woo! Very cool. Like, not warm cool, not cool cool, but cool. <laughs> okay, so again, we're going to zoom in. And we are going to set this white balance like we did before, clicking on the eyedropper and then clicking on the first box there in the portrait section. And then I'm going to zoom back out. Um, then I'm going to go up to File, Export with Preset, and I'm going to click on Color Checker Passport. This is why it was loaded. It's a plug-in for Lightroom, so this is why we load it onto our computer. So I'm going to click on that, and it's asking me to name the profile. Um, this sweet little baby's name is Mila, so I'm just going to name it Mila. And you should do this for every different session that you have or every different location that you go on because the lighting is going to be different everywhere, obviously. And so you want a, a extremely accurate profile for each session. So I would, I'm now going to set a new one for each one of my sessions. So I'm going to name this Mila. It's going to say that I already have one named Mila because I tested this last night. So I'm just going to override that one that I already did so that I can show you how this works. So then it's processing the profile. It takes about 30 seconds. doesn't take very long. And then the next step you have to do is close out Lightroom and reopen it. It says here it needs to be restarted to activate the profile. I'm going to say OK. Let this finish processing. Okay, and then I'm gonna quit Lightroom. Don't wanna back it up right now. That'll take too long. And then I'm going to reopen Lightroom. So now my profile should be ready to use. So I'm back on my picture here. I just love this picture. She smiled and I was like, no, <laughs> I have this color checker in here. This is the perfect picture. And so I luckily caught the smile and my next tutorial, actually, I'm going to go in and show you how to composite and I'm going to put her smiling face into this picture, which is cute, but kind of weird cute I don't know I so I'm gonna use that um, to composite this this her face into the other picture here but anyway so that's my next tutorial so now I pull up the picture again I'm gonna come over to my adjustment panel and I'm gonna scroll almost all the way down to the bottom where it says camera calibration now I've never dealt with this before I remember years ago um, in a class that I was in for photography and they talked about the different profiles for your camera and you can set these up in your camera. I use um, Canon and so they, there's an Adobe standard which is just the standard profile that Adobe says is going to be average um, coloring white balance contrast across any it's like it's like doing um, auto white balance or auto anything that's their standard but you can also set your profile to portrait which is going to give you a certain amount of contrast and a certain amount of white balance that Adobe says is good for portraits or you could set your camera profile to landscape if you're a landscape photographer and it changes, it tweaks the contrast and the colors, um, makes the greens greener and the, the contrast probably deeper because it's a landscape and that's what you want in landscape pictures. So I've always just been stuck on standard because I never went down here and never thought about it, never looked at it. And so now I know that this color checker passport is set up to give me a profile that's going to really have accurate color, white balance,
contrast and probably a couple other tweaks that I don't know about specific for this setting and this situation and this lighting situation. So I'm going to go to camera calibration profile and then I'm going to scroll down to the profile that I just set for this particular picture. Her name was Mila. And so I want you to watch because it's very minimal. It's not a huge change like the original was when we changed the white balance. It's just going to be tweaking it just a little bit. So I'm going to click on that. And there it changed. You can actually see the change more on the color checker. So I can turn this off and back on so that you can see how it changed. So I'm turning it off. And some of these colors look like they got a little duller. Her face looks a teeny, teeny, tiny bit less warm. And then I'm going to click it back on and it warms it up just a little bit. So I said to myself, well, that's like a couple extra steps and it's not a huge drastic change. You know, I could just set the white balance and be done with it. It's worked for me for so long. But now I'm thinking, you know, if if I want to do everything as accurately as possible and I'm calibrating my screen, I should be setting my profile correctly so that all of my colors and all of my contrast and my white balance is as accurate as it could possibly be. That's going to help me with her skin tone later on when I'm editing and trying to smooth things out. Um, if she's super red or super yellow, um, I can fix those things easier because I know exactly what I'm looking at is as accurate as it could possibly be. So I would set this profile now and then I would go back to the top and do my regular little starter tweaks again. I actually created my own preset to do that. Um, so I'm going to click on my starter preset. And like I said, I add contrast, I add a little bit of clarity. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I did add a little noise reduction and then my lens correction profile. And I think that's it. And then I have my Mila preset. So now I can, like these are all of the images that I've called from this session. So I can take this, all of these adjustments that I've made for this picture, I'm gonna select all of the images from that session, and then I'm gonna hit sync down here at the bottom of the adjustment panel. And it's going to ask me, what do you wanna sync? And I basically wanna sync everything that I did. So I could go through and just check each one individually, but I don't need to do that. I usually keep crop off because sometimes I'll crop the first picture and I'll forget and then all of my pictures will get cropped and that's a pain in the butt. Um, so I usually leave that one off, but everything else checked and I hit synchronize and it magically puts all of those adjustments onto all of the other pictures um, in that setting. So that's what I learned about my color checker passport. I highly recommend it um, on sessions. Um, my clients are like, ooh, this is fancy. Like, you must be really professional. And I feel fancy when I'm using it. And now I'm excited because I know I'm, you know, getting one step closer to being that much better because I know now that my colors and everything are completely accurate. So that's that. Um, my next video, like I said, I'm going to show you how to composite um, two images together. If you have this setting that you don't like, but you love the baby and you want to put her into this setting, minus the toes, of course, um, I'm going to show you how to do that next. So thanks for watching if you made it this far. And I hope you enjoyed it and learned something and I'll see you next time. Thanks.